If you're into planes and engineering, you've probably heard of the area rule. The typical description is pretty simple. You look at the cross-sectional area of a plane along its length and try to make it as smooth as possible to reduce drag. But that doesn't really address why this rule works, and it glosses over some of the specifics that are actually pretty interesting. Apparently, the area rule has been discovered several times throughout history, but in the US we usually give credit to aerodynamics legend Richard T. Whitcomb, who discovered the area rule in 1952. On top of discovering the area rule, Wickham also did substantial work on supercritical airfoils, which are highly efficient at near supersonic speeds, and he invented winglets, which reduce wingtip vortices and thus decrease induced drag. But like I said, he was not the first to discover the area rule. That honor likely goes to Otto Frenzel of Germany, who discovered it around 1943. There are several German aircraft concepts that would have used this rule, but it looks like none of them were completed by the end of World War II. Some other German aerodynamicists were close to discovering the rule around the same time, but again it looks like their work was cut short by the end of the war. Now, with the history lesson out of the way, what is the area rule, actually? Let's begin with simple aerodynamic drag. For slow speeds and simple shapes, drag can be calculated with this equation. There's a constant for how draggy the object is. This is basically capturing the shape and roughness of the object. There's the frontal area to describe the size of the object. And you have this 1 half rho v squared, which is capturing the speed and density of the air. You can decrease drag by streamlining your object, which decreases CD. You can also shrink the object, which decreases area, slow the object down to reduce the velocity term, or even fly at higher altitudes to reduce the air density. This all makes intuitive sense. But when we add wings to the object, it gets a bit more complicated. CD is no longer a constant, it actually changes with angle of attack, or more specifically, lift. This results in a new equation that looks like this. You still have a minimum drag term, which is the small CD, called profile drag. But you also have this term called induced drag. This is related to those wingtip vortices I was talking about earlier, and it increases with the square of your lift coefficient. Basically, this means that drag increases if you pitch the plane up or down, and it holds true for most flying conditions. But once we started flying closer to the speed of sound, more drag started to appear seemingly out of nowhere. It turns out that there's a third term in this equation called wave drag, and this is where the area rule comes in. The rule actually has nothing to do with the first two terms, so applying it to a slow aircraft won't necessarily give you any real benefit aside from making it look fast. But it does give us a very interesting way of predicting wave drag at high speeds. What Wickham actually discovered was that a model with wings produces the same wave drag as a model with a bulge around its center where the wings would go. Both of these models have the same area plot, but one is much easier to produce and study. Obviously, this big bulge isn't streamlined, so you want to smooth it out and reduce wave drag. If you do the same thing to the model with wings, the drag values will still match. This is the actual area rule. It's not just trying to smooth the area, it's realizing that the shock waves produced by an aircraft are only dependent on the cross-sectional area, at least from a drag perspective. Now, this doesn't mean that the total drag is the same for both objects. Of course, the one without wings won't have induced drag, and it also has less surface area, so that should reduce the profile drag. But if you correct for those factors, you can use a very simple model to accurately predict the wave drag of a more complex shape like an airplane. This even helps with computer and hand calculations because you can simplify a complex 3D shape to a simple 2D shape, which eliminates a lot of unnecessary math. And that's the part that I found really interesting when I finally covered area rule in my aerodynamics class. But maybe I'm just weird. So far, we've been looking at the area by slicing the airplane vertically, but it turns out you're actually supposed to make cuts at an angle. This angle is equal to the Mach angle, which is basically the angle of the shock wave in front of the plane. You can figure that out pretty easily using geometry. When you're flying close to the speed of sound, the angle is about 90 degrees, which is why we've been able to ignore it up until now. But once you reach higher speeds, you do have to take it into account. I'm not entirely sure why this works at an intuitive level, especially because it suggests that the area plot is different if you're flying upside down, so it must have something to do with lift. This also presents an interesting engineering challenge, because you have to optimize your plane at its top speed, but also at the lower speeds that you have to pass through to get there. 
Obviously, there's a lot more to learn about aerospace engineering, so check out my channel and subscribe if you want more in-depth science and engineering content. But for now, I'm Con Hathi, and I'll see you in the next video.